Hello, my awesome and amazing Sagittariuses. It's Mel with Blue Scorpion Tarot here to bring you another general collective reading. If you are a Sagittarius born on December 3rd, then this special bonus reading is for you. Happy birthday uh, to all of my Sagittariuses born on December 3rd from a few weeks ago. I sincerely hope you had a really great day. Maybe you were able to take the day off of work. For those of you, I think the third fell on uh, a Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. So hopefully you had the day off or were able to get out of the house and do something fun. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the energy of the reading. Calling upon the trusted ancestors of my Sagittarius is born on December 3rd to bring in the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth through the power of the numbers. And so it is. course, rolling the dice to see what I need to shuffle the deck to. Power of number six. <clears throat> Power of number nine. And <clears throat> Power of number eight. Okay. Looks like we are going to the number 23. Some of you Sagittarius born on December 3rd could be dealing with a Gemini or a Cancerian born in the month of June. You could also be dealing with a Virgo or a Libra born in the month of September. You could also be dealing with a Leo or a Virgo born in the month of August. You could also be dealing with an Aquarius or a Pisces born in the month of February. You could also be dealing with a Pisces or an Aries born in the month of March. Some of you were born in 1962, 1963, 1968, or 1969. You could have also been born in 1982, 1983, 1986, or 1989. You could have also been born in 1992, 1993, 1996, or possibly 1998 for some of you. But without further ado, let's go ahead. Power of number 23 for my beautiful Sagittariuses born on December 3rd. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, <clears throat> sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23. Trusted ancestors of my Sagittarius is born on December 3rd. What is the overall general collective energy, please? What does Sagittarius need to know at this time frame? Show me what's up. The Four of Cups. Are you feeling rejected right now, Sag? Are you feeling like all of your efforts are going in vain for nothing? There's some kind of another opportunity headed in your direction or a specific person may be headed back in your direction once again. Mm, be very conscientious of that, okay? We're still technically in a Mercury retrograde. Maybe you have also been trying to reach out to a specific person, but maybe they're not reading your text messages or they're reading your text messages, but they're not responding back to you. You could also be trying to call them or maybe message or hit them up on cer certain social media platforms, etc. Okay. <clears throat> and without uh, any further progression. So you could be feeling kind of rejected or left out in the cold right now or abandoned by a particular person, place or thing or situation. Okay. So somebody's going to be reaching out or there is a new opportunity headed in your direction when it comes to possibly your career right now. Okay. So we're going to see what the Four of Cups is bringing in. Something about making plans for the future. I feel like you still need to be excited, Sag, about your life in general. We're very close to the new year. We're almost in 2024. 
I feel like spirit does not want you to give up right now on the things that bring you joy and your excitement nor enthusiasm, not losing your enthusiasm for your dreams and your goals right now. And somehow, some way, getting focused in order to put these dreams or ideas into full action. Okay, because the two of wands is about planning. Now, some of you guys could be dealing with a water sign, Cancer, Pisces, or Scorpio more specifically, and or some of you could be dealing with a fire sign, an Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. We're going to go into the Kipper deck. And I also feel here too that spirit does not want you to give up on your romantic life, Sag. Trusted ancestors, what is this Four of Cups energy, please? Unexpected income. Okay, so like I said, there's an unexpected opportunity. And if this has to do with like your career, working for a particular company, you could have put out a lot of job applications or resumes. Um, <clears throat> there could have been also interviews. You could have went on numerous interviews and maybe felt like you weren't getting anywhere, just you know, going around in circles. But so something here is definitely coming into the mix of it all. Okay, so somebody wants to offer you something good here. Okay, so that's why I said, <clears throat> do not. Excuse me for one second. <clears throat> I have to clear my throat chakra. Um, spirit does not want you to give up on your visions right now. And where you see your life going, okay? High honor. This is about you leveling up. Focused intention. Your focused intention is what is going to level and advance you in your career in all areas of your life. This is about you getting back also too into perfect power, perfect control. A lot of you need to work on your heart chakra and also your solar plexus and your third eye. And I'll add in the crown chakra because in order to have focused intention, you need to have that third eye and that crown chakra completely cleared out, okay? You could be carrying a lot of residual energy from other people, places, things, or situations, bad relationships, bad connections with certain friends or family members that are very toxic that could be weighing your energy down and blocking you from moving forward. If need be, you might need to go no contact. No contact with these specific people in your life. It doesn't mean that you don't care about them, but there's something here about opportunity that's trying to come in your direction. But when we're not feeling good about ourselves, when we're not grasping, we'll say, or sucking the marrow out of life and embracing each day as another opportunity for adventure, another opportunity for more success, another opportunity uh, of the day to make new friends or put yourself out there, learn a new skill. You have to stay in that focused enthusiasm if you want to rise to the top. A lot of you are meant to be entrepreneurs or you have started like a side business, side hustle. Somebody is in real estate or wants to go into real estate or it could be real estate appraisal, something of that nature, okay? <clears throat> and a lot of you Sagittarius's are very skillful with your hands. You are artists. You can play music. I'm picking up on the piano, the flute, the drums, uh, the guitar, I'm also picking up on the saxophone, okay? But I also saw fashion design. I, I see the templates of the figures being drawn out. This could be you having dreams of, you know, putting your uh, clothing collection like at, <clears throat> at Fashion Week in New York City. You know, a lot of you have big aspirations, okay? And right now you may feel like, God, you know, all I do, it feels like I just work and work and work and I got no romantic life going on. Well, listen, it's a great area. Yes, it's a great area because if you are very driven and focused on your career and going after and get what you want, you got to have that same enthusiasm for your romantic life. So when you least expect it, possibly in the next four days or four months, you could end up meeting a new partner, a new soulmate. But I feel like Spirit's saying, if you want to level up, you got to leave all the toxic trash in the past and not bring it into 2024. 
this chapter of this year and the energy cycle of this year is getting ready to close out. Like I said, what kind of an impact can you make in 2023? You've got, you know, less than a week, you know, uh, in order to make this massive change, you know, or at least get a solid plan of action going for the first two weeks of January. How are you going to make an impact on, in the first two weeks of January? And really push forward, really make something good happen or put yourself out there. Again, maybe it's signing up for a class. Maybe it's an online class. Maybe it's a class in a local uh, college or a community, whatever the case may be. This is about you growing and expanding and learning how to mentally focus and start creating and channeling new opportunities. And when you keep pushing forward, wherever, uh, you know, as if you had um, interviews with people, you're, somebody's going to say yes to you. But you have to also go in with a winning yes attitude. And it really is how you present yourself. Are you presenting yourself in these interviews like you are top notch? You got to act the part, look the part, be the part. This is how we get to that success. We have to embrace that energy frequency of what that position requires or, again, taking our knowledge and bringing it to the next phase, the next level, you know. But this is about you not giving up on yourself and not getting downhearted and thinking like you're always going to get a no, Sag. No, it is yes time. It is absolutely yes time for you. you got to keep saying, I only accept the yes. I am the yes. People always say yes to me. You know, you have to you have to feel through that vibrational frequency. You have to see yourself winning. Okay? You have to see yourself winning. This isn't about being egotistical. This is about your self concept. <clears throat> In knowing your value and your worth. Now, for a lot of you who are dealing with a specific person right now, we're going to go into the hidden truth oracle. Let's see what this person wants to say to you, Sag. Trusted ancestors for the specific person that my Sagittarius is born on December 3rd is dealing with. What do they want to say to Sag? I know I was a distraction from your pain. So this person might not exactly have been the one, but they were a distraction from other traumas that you have experienced in prior relationships. But I do feel that this person's going to try to reach out again, but fair warnings for armed. If you're not exactly sure what to say to this person, Sag, you know, if you consider this person an ex or just a potential suitor, potential lover, you need to know the six most important questions to ask them. And if you don't know what those six most important questions are, you can go to the channel on YouTube, The Art of Love. The host name is Lucia. I do not know her personally. But she has a video. If you scroll through her videos, you will find the one that says what to say when the ex returns. Or you can type it in the search bar. Six most important things to say when the ex returns. And then you could just put in the subtitle, The Art of Love. Okay. So, and that video will pop up. I don't know. I think it runs about maybe mm, no more than maybe a 10 minute video. But these questions, when somebody returns back <clears throat> after they know that they really have done you wrong and they start to realize that the grass over on the other side was fake and now they want to start to head back in your direction. Do not take them back right away, Sag. Don't do that. No. First things first. You've got to ask them those questions. Okay? You've got to do it because it's vitally, crucially important because I feel that this person you dealt with, you went around the block with them a couple times over and they really left you in a state of confusion. And I tell you this right now, no true soulmate is ever going to make you feel like you're left in limbo. No true soulmate is never going to make you feel unsafe with them. That's the reason why you have to say the right questions to an ex or a former lover, potential suitor, 
these guys or women that just poof, they disappear. And then all of a sudden they come back around the bend again, whatever, you know, you came closer than anyone. See in their mind, Sag, oh, you came close, but you weren't number one. <clears throat> this person made you question your value. You were so close, Sag, so close, but you came in second, you came in third, you came in fourth. This is how this person is. That's why I said I personally would not trust them. I would not trust them, you guys. Not until you get control over your emotions, you ask them those right questions, and really evaluate Which means also, too, they're not finding anybody that can compare to you. Would I think that this person might be a little bit intimidated to contact you or maybe fearful to contact you? A bit. I think the idea is stewing and brewing in their mind <clears throat> because I have a four of cups. Somebody wants to reach out. But don't you dare take them back right away. Trusted ancestors, show me the romantic energy going on with Sag. Forgiving and learning. Mm -hmm. As you forgive, as you release and heal the past. Your experience, you experience more, I got to put my glasses on. I can't read it. <laughs> there we go. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moments. It takes a lot to forgive. Forgiveness is a choice. I don't think forgiveness is necessary in every single situation because if this person kept doing the same old, same old bullcrap, kept treating you the same way, never changed, they still made you feel unvalidated and, you know, still ignored you. I mean, yeah, forgiveness is hard. Um, I don't necessarily believe that if you don't forgive, it hurts you more than it hurt, you know, doesn't hurt them, et cetera, bullshit statement, right? No. Here's the truth. Yeshua walked away from his perpetrators in many scenarios. You know, because Yeshua, meaning the way you guys say it, Jesus, but it's Yeshua, knew the difference when somebody, he could see right through a person's spirit. You know, if somebody was in truth going to change. It's null and void. It's a wasted energy. If this person abused you, verbally abused you, assaulted you, um, physical abuse, mental abuse, emotional abuse, it doesn't matter what kind of abuse. Abuse is abuse is abuse. Yeah, I've got crows going on outside. That's like a huge energy right there. Because there were people gabbing, gossiping, and cackling about your connection with this person. Sometimes it's a wasted energy. But you really have to use your wisdom and discernment. Does this person in truth really genuinely deserve your forgiveness? Because in truth, if you have forgiven this person over and over and over and they're still treating you like shit, Sag, drop them like a hot potato. They're not going to change. And that's just wasted energy. It's just wasted energy to think about it, to contemplate anything. Okay. They may try to come begging you back for forgiveness, to take them back. But that's where the logical reasoning comes in because the last thing that you need to do is be back on a vicious cycle with this person, being like the little gerbil on the spindle, not knowing when to get off, you know, not knowing when to get off that spindle and stop making yourself dizzy with the confusion that this person has exuded towards you before in the past. 
So forgiveness is a choice. Yeah, it may be true. You do definitely have a past life connection with this person. You have known each other before. However, I can also look at past life connection as a new soulmate. What seems more like the path of least resistance? Waiting around for somebody to get their act together or you being in the driver's seat, taking control of your life and your destiny and your thoughts and your emotions, go through the healing phase and you wipe the slate clean and start putting yourself, elevating your life and only going to places where the people or looking for a soulmate are more upstanding and where you're not going to lower your standards anymore, Sag. There's a lot to think about. I feel like there's a little bit of a judgment call on you right now. That's not to say like spirit is trying to push you underneath its thumb. Okay. It's about knowing the difference. It's about Sagittarius rules over the ninth house of the Zodiac. It is about wisdom. It is about education, research, knowledge, esoteric wisdom, spirituality, religion, all of that. Okay. <clears throat> Sagis are the truth seekers. You're the archer. Always making sure that that bow and arrow, that that arrow is going to hit the target every single time. Like you're going to make your mark or put your stamp on something. You know what I mean? And using your wisdom. To use wisdom is to use your logic, is to think clearly, to plan ahead. You might even intuitively know that this person, in fact, is you know their pattern, that they're probably going to try to reach out to you again. But I sincerely hope that, you know, if you're still battling whether or not you really want to manifest this person back into your life, I think you need to do a pros and cons list, not just the six questions that you need to ask them when they return, but a, pro, a true pros and cons list to step outside of yourself and really evaluate this person's actions and behaviors and how they've treated you. If the cons outweigh the pros, drop them like a hot potato, you guys, and don't look back. Because, it, like I said, what sounds easier? Let's go through the healing phase. Let's get our self-esteem up and running. Let's get the self-concept up and running. This person made you question yourself. They made you think you weren't good enough. They made you think that there really wasn't any connection when in truth there was because they're the past tense. Your souls, in a way, could have known each other for many lifetimes. The soul never dies, you guys. The soul never dies. It's all energy. It's all energy. So push forward. Don't be afraid to release and let go of the things that are no longer serving your highest purpose because you have something that is unexpected. Yes, it could be the money thing. Yes, it could be a new job opportunity. But when we look at the imagery that was in that card of the unexpected income, it's like the universe gearing up to reward you when you walk away from toxicities and you learn the lessons, right? You're going to start opening up the floodgates of more opportunity to come in your direction that is going to make you feel so good that you're going to be vibrating on a higher level frequency that these people from the past, or if it's a friend, a family member, a former lover, ex-girlfriend, ex-boyfriend, whatever the case may be, they're not going to be able in a way to touch you. You know what I mean? They're not going to be able to get on that same vibrational frequency as you. That's what happens when we keep rising to the top. But we just, it is true. We can outgrow people. When we expand our consciousness, we will outgrow people, places, things, and situations. Embracing the change of you. But it could be true that they'll come back, try to beg you. Be very conscientious because you deserve better. 
you deserve to have a healthy committed partnership where it's meeting and matching you on every single level, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. So, and spirituality it should be the number one top priority. I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about being religious. I am talking about true sense of spirituality because their morals, ethics, and values are going to also be resonating at a high vibrational frequency and they're going to meet and match you on that level. That's the type of soulmate partner that you should be striving for. And stop thinking about the potential, quote unquote, the potential that this other person might or may not have. Okay. They left you questioning yourself. And they made you feel rejected. And they could be highly worried that you will reject them. But that is on them. You know, they say that time is of an illusion, but with this person, timing may not be on their side. Because once you start to learn your value and you start to realize you don't need anybody to validate you, Sag, they're not even going to, like I said, they're you're going to be up here and they're not going to be able to reach you up here, you know? It could be a matter of forgiving yourself for lowering your standards after a period of time, you know, and realizing, no, nope, I'm not going to put myself through that again. No, lesson learned. The inconsistency. The moment somebody starts to be inconsistent with you, just drop them. If they choose to come back around the bend, you, you're in the driver's seat whether or not you want to choose to respond back to them or not. You know, and I get it. People's lives get busy. However, when you are striving for good things in your life and you've got people around you who are not, they're not on that same wavelength with you. They don't need to be into the same things as you, but like your friends, your family members, you know, people who have done you wrong, your former lovers, the current person right now. Okay. When you choose to elevate they, they themselves have two choices. Either they're going to stay behind or they're going to choose to elevate to a higher level of frequency or consciousness in order to meet and match you. Because that means that they would be striving for something better in their life instead of wallowing in any kind of toxicity. Or they would come to recognize or realize that they are toxic. You know what I mean? And some people will never recognize that they are toxic. Because they don't think they are. They think they're perfect already. Know what I mean? So right now, this is about you staying focused. Keeping your eye on the prize right now, Sag, and not backing down anymore. Stop settling. It's time to stop settling for less than what you deserve. Because you only deserve the best. My awesome and amazing Sagittarius's, if you would like to book a personal reading with me and do it through the power of the numbers, you can hit me up at Blue Scorpion Gifts at gmail.com and my amazing assistant Victoria will book you for that personal reading. But until next time, take care. <laughs>